Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, Edge of 3D. It's been a couple weeks since I put out a video. Um, need to get to work on some because a lot of these kits are starting to get out onto the uh, into the public's hands, and a lot of questions coming up. Uh, try to do the best I can with uh, keeping people up to speed on how to get these up and running and printing, uh, as well as some minor little uh, changes that need to be done uh, based on experience. Uh, the biggest one, moving the Y-stepper uh, over to the other side of the printer to allow enough room for the uh, Y-end stop. But the purpose of the video today is, as many of you seen, you've got to see the trials and tribulations to get to this. Um, the articulated Falcor model. Um, I, I put up a pretty detailed post about what it took to, uh, to print this. Went through all of the failures. And as of yet, nobody caught that there's not a number three. It skips from number two to number four. We're not going to talk about number three. But, and then, obviously, by now you've seen, there's an even bigger one. This one here, the white one, wound up being 49 inches. And somebody said, oh no, you got to print one five feet long. Well, here you go. It's five feet. It's printed in uh, rainbow silk PLA. Um, I'm six feet tall, so I'm going to let the tail touch the floor, which you can't see on the camera, but the tail's touching the floor. There you go. Five foot. It's done. I'm not printing any more of these ridiculously large um, articulated models because at this point it's it, it's just sending it to the printer and going through the filament and there you go, it's done. Um, this one right here, start to finish, no failures, nothing. Um, sliced it, got everything figured out couple rolls of uh, Rainbow Silk PLA. Um, this is DO 3D brand. Um, I will tell you right now, any Silk PLA is hard to print with. Rainbow adds another dynamic because of each color change. There's a little bit of a change in the filament. So if you're not dialed in, you're going to have clogs. You're going to have problems. Um, but let's get back to what it took to get to the white one here. That was that was the uh, well the never-ending story. <laughs> um, the never-ending story of actually getting the first one printed. Um, most of the failures I have kept. They're all down here. Um, give me just a second here to. Uh, Get them all gathered up. I'm going to have to uh, move this guy out of the way. So I'm going to put this one over here on the floor. And we'll go through some of these failures. Bear with me. There we go. That's all of them that I kept. That's not including the ones that went in the garbage. So when I printed the uh, PETG Titanic, that was a big model. It's not anymore. But I still have it. More to come. So. Andres at uh, belt3dprinterkit.com contacted me one night and we were having a conversation about stuff and he said, hey, 
try to print this out. So I went and got the uh, model and, and uh, I looked at it real quick and I'm like, no problem. No problem at all. You know, I've already printed a big Titanic in PETG. I've printed uh, literally hundreds of things on the printer. And I mean, I've had a couple little issues here and there. Um, had a layer shift on a part that I was printing here a while back when the uh, nozzle sagged a little bit and caught the part and caused a layer shift. And then I had uh, some one other one where I forgot to change the filament before I went to bed. But um, and, then, and there's been a couple of others where I didn't slice them right. But since then, been no issues. So I'm like, yeah, no problem. Well, here's no problem number two, I think this one was. Um, the first one, I stopped it. I don't remember why. I think it was because of a nozzle clog or something. Um, anyway, it progressively one problem after another and burned through lots of filament. So the first big problem was not using the right filament. When Andres asked me to print this, I said, what color do you want it printed in? Because um, it's going to take more than one roll of filament. And I have just, I mean, that's nothing up there. There's crates full of filament down here. The problem I have is I don't have two rolls of the same color of the same brand. Um, with the exception of the white that I use for printing the uh, lithophanes. Um, these things here. I have several rolls of that. So I'll just use that. It's white PLA. No problem. I was wrong. <laughs> that filament does not work good for doing this type of stuff. Um, I'm sure that with some tuning on the hot end and tuning on the printer and so on and so forth I could get there but I wasn't having any luck. I, I was having problems. Um, having under extrusion problems, having, uh, well, clogs causing under extrusion. Um, thought I had it all worked out, sent one off to print, and I think that was, actually I did not save that one. I did, right here, this one. So I was to this point right here and I noticed it was starting to under extrude. As you can see, it's very weak and no layer adhesion. So I got an entire hot end ready. I paused the printer, brought the hot end up, disassembled it, and every, just like clockwork, every couple minutes or so I would turn around here and I would click Octoprint just to re-energize the or make sure that the uh, steppers were staying energized so something didn't get knocked out of place and got the hot end all back together and as I went and I had my wrench here and my pliers there and I was tightening the nozzle the steppers de-energized and it went like this and like this and there was no chance of me ever getting it back to the point where it stopped at. I tried you know, I, I thought I seen how much it moved, so I tried moving it back. Yeah, it didn't work. It it, it failed. Period. It, and it was not this one. It was one that was going all the way down to the belt because as soon as it came down to the belt, it uh, it dug into the belt really hard. So anyway, that one did get thrown out. Um, at that point, I decided I needed to get different filament. And my go-to for generally all PLA printing is the Overture brand. Um, like it, hate it, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I will tell you that I have used a lot of it and I have good luck with it. Um, is it the best? Probably not. But at the price point, that's my go-to. So I ordered 
a lot of overture white filament because I knew that just buying two rolls wasn't going to get us to the end of this, or I suspected not. So I got the overture white, and that was one of these here. Um, I think this was the first one done in overture white. Um, it's hard to see, but it, uh, it layer shifted pretty significantly up here at this end, so I killed it. Um, or maybe it was this one. Anyway, re-did things, bumped the uh, voltage up on my stepper drivers. Um, I don't remember at what point that was. Um, Maybe this one here, I think this one here is the one that uh, I killed the Raspberry Pi. I've been in the next room down and I've been running my CNC uh, doing some carving in some uh, 3 quarter inch MDF board which creates this really nasty fine dust and my dust collector isn't working right now. So I was using a regular household vacuum to vacuum up that dust. Our relative humidity here right now is 22%. So the air is very dry. So everything is very staticky. And a household vacuum doesn't have a ground wire running through the hose. The problem with that is generates static electricity, builds up in your body. I've got rubber-soled shoes on. I walked out of that room, walked in here, did not need to hit the light switch. But... I had a light plugged in back here that has a switch right on the plug. So I reached under here to hit that switch and a spark jumped from my arm to the Raspberry Pi. The printer stopped immediately. It just stopped mid-print. And I tried to reboot the Pi several times. Tried to put a new image on an SD card and get it started that way. Uh, the Pi was dead. So I keep a stack of Raspberry Pis. These are two zero W's. Um, got a whole tub of Pis up there somewhere. Um, grabbed a new Pi. I think this is a three, might be a four. I don't, I think it's a three that I put back in there. But anyway, Grabbed a new Pi, got it imaged, got it booted up, loaded up everything. I went ahead and started a print from there. And then I wound up with, I think it was this layer shift. So I got into the printer, um, adjusted the V-Ref. Voltages up on all the steppers. I mean, pretty much maxed them out for what the steppers are uh, capable of and what the drivers are capable of. Um, sent it again and had another failure. Had more layer shifting. Pretty certain it was this one. This was the one where it started layer shifting. So I'm talking to some guys on Discord who are on a, on a server that I'm on on Discord who are a lot more knowledgeable in 3D printers than I am. Uh, it was determined that the Creality board just isn't up to the task for these big long prints. Um, the caps, the chips are getting heat soaked on the drivers. They're starting to drop out. And that's what was happening here is it got up here where it was in a lot more complicated area. The, the driver was dropping out and it, it just it was stopping moving on the uh, x-axis causing layer shifts so got a board out of another printer wrote the Marlin firmware for it got it loaded up got everything set up and going um, it's been a week or so so I'm not and I don't have a script in front of me to remember exactly how everything went down and I'm not going to stand here and hold my notebook uh, but the nozzle on my hot end was the original nozzle that I printed in ABS and it was a little floppy but it was still doing the job well I, I 
came in to find this. <laughs> and the nozzle and the fan were completely gone from the printer. <laughs> they were actually over here behind it. And it subsequently, when it yanked that out, it also unplugged the cooling fan for the hot end. But it was still printing just fine. There's, I mean, that is good, solid. There's, there's no under extrusion there, nothing. I mean, it is solid. And it was happily printing away, it was just not where it should be. So, I killed it, hopped on the computer, designed a entirely, well, I, I didn't, not new mount, but I beefed up the mount that, that I have here and printed that in carbon fiber. ABS on that printer, uh, printed a new part cooling nozzle in engineering uh, resin on the resin printer, put all that together, I completely rebuilt the hot end, um, I went ahead and threw an all metal um, hot end in there and put a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on it. Got everything, I, I, I ran just a quick test print with a couple lines across the bed. Everything looked good. So I hit print and print it all the way to the end. Now, the camera, I, I would have to get the camera right down here on the model to show you. There's two places on this model near the end of it where it layer shifted just a tiny bit. And you actually, I have to sit here and really concentrate to find them. But, so it, it didn't print 100% perfect. So I'm going to call it 99% and move on. So that's all the failures that's led up to it. Just one right after the other. Um, I saved them all for the purpose of the video. Now I'm going to tote them out to the... Uh, rubbish bin and I'm going to bend them and Tuesday morning the uh, noisy truck that wakes me up at 2.30 a.m. is going to come by and take the bin away. But as I said, no sooner than I finished this one and it was said, hey, you need to do one at least five feet long in rainbow silk PLA. So I got a couple of rolls of rainbow silk PLA and as I said I'm not printing any more of these this is the last one um, at this point it's I, I, I send it to the printer and 22 hours 23 hours later I change out the roll of filament and it, there you go it's done um, this is printed also with a 0.08 nozzle uh, zero infill uh, no supports anywhere on the model. It's just printed exactly like it is. Anyway, that's the Dragons. It is, uh, let's, let's move his, uh, well, I'm going to move his nose. Out here to something I can hook the tape measure on. We'll slide this down to kind of hold him in place. And this is a uh, west side of the pond tape measure, not an east side, so it measures in uh, freedom units, not, uh, not metric. But uh, that's, I'm, I'm holding my finger right here at the five foot mark. We are at uh, 62 inches minus uh, three-eighths of an inch for the uh, eight millimeter rod because I was hooked on the other side of it so five feet two inches it's done it's printed here it is um, don't know what I'm gonna do with it but it, it, it's at this point it's there's it, there's no point in me printing any more of these um, it is a challenge it will tell you how well you have your printer set up. It will tell you how well you have things dialed in. Um, it will force you to uh, really look at things when you're starting to uh, slice them. But 
I'm not doing any more of them. I'm going to move on to other things. Um, this printer is actually getting torn apart as soon as I'm done putting this video. Uh, as soon as I'm done rendering it and getting it uploaded, um, this printer here is all coming apart and other things to come. And that's really all I can say right now. Anyway, I will uh, throw up a couple of, well, I'll throw time lapses of all the time lapses that I saved of these. A um, couple of the failures on the white one and the white one printing and the rainbow one printing. Like I say, I'll, after the, at the end of the video here, I'll throw those up and uh, you'll see some time lapses. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's the Big Dragons. Uh, I encourage you to give it a try. Uh, don't give up. Just know that uh, more than likely you're going to have some failures before you reach success. Um, at least that was the case for me. And have fun. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, enjoy the uh, time lapses at the end of this. And I will catch up to you in a couple of days with some setup tips and bed leveling tips and stuff on this printer since people are starting to get them. Um, not going to get into it on this video, but I, I've got some stuff I'm working on that I'll, I'll upload to the channel and uh, also link it to the Facebook group. But uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Peace.